we've got an exclusive. We're at Sub CNC in Dunstable, massive sliding head users, but we have come here to review the first, or one of the first, L32 LFV machines in the country. Is that correct? That's why, Colin, yeah. Okay. But first of all, what I want to do is get a little bit of background about Sub CNC. Well, Colin, I've uh, been going nearly 10 years now. Well, 10 years in uh, November. Uh, we've got 11 machines on site. Started off as Citizen. The last four machines in the last 18 months have all been Citizen, all been LFV. Okay, so um, I'm thinking big batch runs, all sliding head work. Uh, small, medium, large. We'll take yeah. it all. Yeah, we do prototype stuff, five off. Um, that will then turn into a batch, maybe 1,500 off, but we go all the way into the hundreds of thousands. Okay, you've got 11 Citizen machines. Why have you gone Citizen? I uh, started off with the Citizen second-hand machine. It's what Jan and I knew from um, uh, our training. Uh, we know the guys, we know the service engineers. It made sense to stick with that, and as the brand's built and we've had to buy more machinery, you know, they've been our go-to people. Yeah. So they've worked with you through your expansion. They've been really, really successful just looking around here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Every step of the way, including relocating into the second unit, you know, been here every step of the way. Okay, and you like to be sort of first, first with things. LFE, I know you've got a couple of LFE machines, but this is, a, as I mentioned, one of the first in the country. Why did you buy it? Right, well, we're looking for more capacity. New machine purchase is always about new capacity. LFB, we've got on a 20 mil and two 12 mil machines. Made sense to get the technology while it's there. Had a word with Citizen. Just so happens there's one on the boat. We'll have that, get it in, <laughs> cut the metal, try it out for them. So it's a bit of a two way thing, you know, yeah. we can feed back to them and we're getting the new technology up front. Okay, so it's been a bit of a learning process in terms of feeding back to them as well and working really closely together? Yeah, absolutely. With, any, with anything new, you, you don't know straight away what, what the capabilities and limitations are. So um, we were just working off the cup, if you little bit, like if you like, um, but the material was chipping. More recently, Citizen have sort of taken us under our wing and they've run a uh, course down at uh, Watford and they've refined how the system works and we're now seeing all the improvements that everyone's talking about. Okay, so when you see improve, say improvements, what sort of things are you talking about? So our tool life's now gone up. Um, we're chipping the material correctly, so we're not we're not harming the machine by battering it with a really high frequency thing. Um, and yeah, service finish. Okay. Now I just want to cover quickly off the L32 in terms of what specification you got on it. So typical specification for this got uh, obviously a bar feeder, three meter bar feeder. We've got mist extraction because um, we've got high pressure coolant system as well. And we've got a uh, small conveyor to remove all those chips we're now making. So high pressure coolant, I'm thinking, why do you need that? If you're chipping, why do you need the high pressure coolant? So we do a lot of um, deep hole drilling with carbide drills and U-drills and things like that. They've got recommended feeds and speeds that you need to use to evacuate the swarf. That requires high pressure coolant. You could argue that LFE would do the same thing, but why slow a tool down outside of its working envelope? Go with the manufacturers, use the high pressure, turn LFE on where else you need it. Okay. I just want to go back to the bar feed. So you're running three metre bar, pretty, well, bar feeders across the whole machine shop pretty much. In terms of guide bush, non guide bush, oversized kit as well, how does that tie in? Um, so yeah, three metre bar feeders at least. We've got a couple of slightly longer ones throughout the shop. Um, standard for us, we've got 38 millimetre capacity on the machine, but we've got 35 mil kit that we can run day in, day out. Um, both in guide bush and non guide bush as well. And materials in terms of the bar, standard bar? Standard bar, but we find with like some of the aluminiums and things, they can be out of round or not terribly good to work through a guide bush. So whip the guide bush out, slide the main spindle through, and it's resolved your problem. Also helps you ain't got enough guide bushes. Fair enough. And you don't, so you don't need to grind the, the bar as such. Don't need to grind the bar. Yeah, yeah. Good help. What about actually um, length of components and remnant? So um, in terms of remnant on the material, if you're running without the guide bush, that's significantly reduced because yeah. you've got one less piece of uh, work holding to accommodate, so that's quite useful. Um, and length of components, you need to be fairly short on a guy bush, less mode. Um, so you could do short components if need? Yeah, yeah, you could do short, we can't do long slender ones, which is what the whole sliding head principle is about. Okay, that's more about the machine and things like that, yeah. but I want to cover more about the LFB now. What about the materials, because you do some tricky materials? Yeah, so we do cut everything here, uh, 303 stainless, 316, 304s, mild steels. I mean, we're running a mild steel at the moment. Stuff stringy as hell, but... Um, <laughs> Those weren't the words you used earlier, George, just to clarify, but stringy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Um, so we cut all the materials, and what we use LFB for is uh, it's a tool in our arsenal, if you like. And go, right, having a problem area here, switch it on, clears the problem, carry on with the normal production thereafter. So, so you're not running LFB all the time on each component? 
No, there's no need, and, and, and why, why stress the machine? Why, why elongate a cycle time over and above what you need to? Right. What we'll do is we'll set a program that's proven, and we'll go, right, we know what the problem areas are, we'll switch LFB on, that clears the issue, right. and then um, we get the best of both worlds. So cycle time's not overly affected, but we're getting the benefit there as well. That's interesting you say that, and so cycle times with the LFB aren't necessarily coming down. They might even go up a little bit, but because you haven't got that, sw that swore for the bird's nesting, then overall it's shorter times. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you could argue that if you've got an operator stopping the machine to remove this swarf, you're going to lose the cycle time there anyway. Yeah. You, you could be looking at other ways of chipping swarf, but right. that would lose your cycle time, you know, when you're slowing tools down and all the rest of it. So, you know, the argument is, yes, it, you'll get a small, uh, small increase, but it's negligible, really. Okay. But key to it is you can run these machines, I understand, ho whole weekend if necessary, or if you want. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. It's all about the yield at the end of the day, how many parts you're going to get in a 24-hour period. So if yeah. you're getting into the night unmanned, if you like running, then it's, it's all helping, isn't it? So LFB has enabled you to do that? Of course, yeah, yeah. Right, again, what I usually like to do is put you to test and actually look at some of your components you've manufactured on the machine. So let's have a look. It looks like you've got two here. got two here, uh, Colin. I've pulled this one out because it's a nice large component. It's out of 316 stainless. It doesn't look terribly complicated, but it's got standard um, sliding head features, so it's got flats, it's got cross holes and all the rest of it, but more uh, critically, it's got a lot of material removal. So it's 316 stainless, you've got a large diameter down to a reasonably small one, so there's a lot of material to come off here. So yep. this would be a classic example of you're getting a nesting or you're getting problematic swarf. So you get your LFB on, cleans that away nicely. It means when you, when you grip the part for the finishing, you're not going to ingress the swarf. Which is a nice feature. A lot of materials come out of the inside as well. Yep. Um, so again, you want to evacuate that as best possible. I and mean, if it's in fine chips, that's the best way to yeah. do it. So the LFB is absolutely perfect for this type of component. Yeah, yeah, perfect for this sort of part. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, and let me take that off you, so you don't have to juggle. What about this one? Looks fairly, uh, fairly tricky. Talk me through it. So this is slightly smaller. Uh, it's C16 again, but it's got many more features on it. Um, it's got external, internal threads. The internal thread. There's not a lot of space in here, so we need to make sure that that bore's nice and clean. So again, LFB, get the swarf out of there, then throw your threading tool in there, you know it's going to be okay. Yes, yeah, so I mean, it might, might sound very, very relatively basic, but before swarf all getting caught up in there and yeah, real yeah, mess. Yeah, and then you'd lose your tool or something like that. So, um, we've got flats, we've got cross-tapped holes, we've got this sort of eccentric nose on it, if you like. Yeah. It's all been milled on, um, okay. but it's all fairly standard features for a machine like this. Right, okay. Also, what you probably can't see, and we'll try and get a decent close-up, is that you've actually got flats milled on there as well, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so we've got uh, this wing, if you like, and then we've got a threaded diameter, a couple of flats on there, probably for locking purposes, I don't know. Excellent. All right, so great example of, of the work you've done, how LFE has really helped you. So just a quick summary of why you like LFE. Um, so it's a problem solver. You know, you, you've got soolings that can solve problems, you've got a uh, high-pressure coolant can solve problem. If these sorts of things aren't working, then you've got LFB as well as a backup. Um, we, we tend to look at a job when we're quoting and we'll go, right, that's a nasty material or that's a particularly lot of stock removal. It's going to be a bit of a faster job. We'll LFB that. That is, of course, a technical term. Technical term, yeah. Excellent. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and I'm assuming next machine will be a citizen and LFB. Of course, yeah. Why not? George, thank you very much. No problem, Colin. Thank you. <laughs>